In this video, we're going to talk about simplifying square roots. So first we're going to look at this problem, square root of nine plus square root of nine. I know that the square root of nine is three, so this is three plus three, which is six. Is this equal to the square root of 18? No, I know that six is equal to the square root of 36, not the square root of 18. So my property that I had with multiplication, where I could combine two square roots that are multiplied by multiplying the numbers and putting them under the same square root does not work for addition. Because I've shown with this example, nine plus nine would be 18. But I can't add these two numbers and put them under a single square root. It doesn't work that way. So what can I do? Well, one thing that I can do is if I have square root of five plus square root of five, I know that anything plus itself is the same as two times the square root of five. Five plus five is the same as saying two times five. So two square root of five is equal to square root of five plus square root of five. Looking at number 11, we have the square root of four times the square root of five. We know that the square root of four is two. So this is also equal to two times the square root of five. And number 12 is taking that a step further. If I have square root of four times five or square root of 20, we know from our previous work with multiplication that I can split this up and write the square root separately. So that's equal to square root of four times five, which is equal to square root of four times the square root of five. I know the square root of four is two, so I can write it this way, two times the square root of five. So this gives us a process for simplifying square roots. If we have a factor that's a perfect square, we can break the number up into that factor times whatever else it would be multiplied by in order to get your original number. We break it into two separate square roots, and then the one that is a perfect square, we take the square root of that. So looking at number 13 here, we have the square root of 200. So what I wanna think about is what numbers, when I multiply them, will equal 200, where one of them is a perfect square. Well, I know that 100 is a perfect square, and 200 is 100 times two. So square root of 200 is equal to the square root of 100 times two. Now I can break that into two separate square roots, 100 and square root of two, I know the square root of 100 is 10. So it's 10 times the square root of two. And a key idea when you're doing this is you always wanna look for the largest perfect square factor that you can find. So for example, um, another way that I could break up 200 is that it is 25 times eight, right? 25 is a perfect square. The problem with this is that it's not fully simplified because eight is still four times two and the four could also come out. So we want the number under the square root to not have any factors that are themselves perfect squares. Otherwise it's not fully simplified. So you're looking for the largest perfect square factor that you can find of the number.